Hello, and welcome to In Our Community. Today, we have a very special guest on the show. Uh, it's Allery Middlebrook from the Middlebrook Center in San Jose, California. And I'm really thrilled to have Allery here. Um, she does so much great work in the community um, and has some really wonderful programs and, and things that she's involved in uh, that I'm, you know, I just really want everyone to know about. So um, this is Allery Middlebrook. Welcome, Allery. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Yes. Um, Allery, uh, as I said, has the Middlebrook Center uh, on Ray Street in da near downtown San Jose, right off the Alameda. And Allery um, uh, is extremely knowledgeable about um, the ecosystem, about uh, native gardening. Um, in fact, she's the co-author of Designing California Native Gardens, The Plant Community Approach to Artful Ecological Gardens. Um, and this is something that she really demonstrates and takes to heart. So, Ellery, um, tell us a little bit about how did the Middlebrook um, Center get started? It started with Middlebrook Gardens. Yes, yes. Well, um, I've been in the Valley for a long time. And uh, I've been involved with plants for a long time, uh, actually since I was a child. And I moved to San Jose, and I immediately started a garden business. And uh, I used to, it used to be called another name because I was involved in uh, tropical plants. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was called interior landscape design, and I designed these courtyards and atriums for office buildings. and. We took care of the plants inside the buildings, and and then the market changed, and so I decided, and I was getting very interested in native plants, mm -hmm. and Mediterranean plants first, and then native plants, and uh, so we changed the name of the business to Middlebrook Gardens, mm -hmm. and started doing more residential. So I went from corporate to residential. And you also went from doing... Um, primarily interior, yes. and then you added exterior design. Exactly. Okay, and Steph, and, and now most of your work is out in, in uh, the exterior world. Right, yeah, and almost exclusively, in fact, exclusively uh, working with ecological principles, you know, working with the native plants of California. So, um, <laughs> and your location on Ray Street, you know, when you first got there, it was a parking lot. That's true. <laughs> And so, how did you take a parking lot and then transform that into the Middlebrook Gardens that we, we, we see today? I mean, your original location was quite spartan, yeah. and, and literally you had to pound through yeah. the blacktop. Right. Well, it was, yeah, it was a co broken concrete, mostly, mm -hmm. with a lot of weeds growing between the cracks. <laughs> <laughs> And you know they paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Well, we we uh, you did the reverse. We did the reverse. <laughs> you brought paradise back. <laughs> okay, so so now um, the Middlebrook Center now is um, numerous things. I mean, it's home to Middlebrook Gardens, right. which is your um, design you know, design build, build yeah. firm, right. Um, but it's also home to numerous nonprofits. That's right. I mean, so you have the California Native Garden Foundation. Right. Uh, you have LC. Right. And then you also um, have a program called the Garden for Ghana Project. That's true. <laughs> I mean, so all on this little, you know, half block in San Jose. Yeah. I mean, so so um, what is Middlebrook Gardens doing these days? Well, Middlebrook Gardens is still doing uh, native gardens for mostly uh, private family homes. Mm -hmm. and, but Middlebrook Gardens is also uh, designing um, larger projects. Uh, we're very involved in designing an agri-hood, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, will be the first of its kind in the United States and maybe the world. That's very cool. And um, I know recently you uh, did a project at one of the churches directly on the Alameda. That's true. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that project? Yeah, that's um, the Christian Science Church. Mm -hmm. And they had a huge expanse of lawn, and, you know, they were spending a lot of money uh, watering that lawn and uh, wasting water. And they came to us, and they said, we want to take out our lawn and put native plants in. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. 
and they're a very good partner uh, with us, and they're, they've uh, really worked with the nonprofit too. Because a lot of times what we do um, with the nonprofit, we're very involved with school, um, you know, school gardens and with uh, class field trips and nature camp and uh, using the gardens that we've created there on Ray Street. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, in the project you were just talking about at, at the church, um, I visited that with you. And right. Um, it was really impressive because you put these like um, dry stream beds right. through it to yeah. help channel the water. Right. Um, but you built all these little ecosystems. Yes, that's true. Um, so, you know, under the trees you had certain things going that were compatible yeah. to that. And right. Other areas, uh, which I find fascinating. Um, well, it's, ba it's all based on how our uh, planet is actually organized. Mm -hmm through uh, microclimates and ecosystems uh, that are actually plant communities. These are plants that evolved together through the millennia. So many of the plants in California, uh, where they were talking about an oak woodland or a grassland or the chaparral or a coastal bluff or a wetland or a riparian, those are the plant communities that uh, grow along rivers and streams and dry creeks. Mm -hmm. Well, all those plants have been growing together for millions of years. So it's just not one plant, it's a community. Just like humans make communities, plants make communities. And that community is what provides life on this planet to all the organisms that depend on the plants. That's great. Uh, <laughs> and I just, I love how you get so passionate about what you do. Um, Okay, so, so, and Middlebrook Gardens itself is actually an award-winning um, design firm. Yes. I, and, um, you know, one of, the, I guess, your, your biggest, uh, latest accomplishments is, is this project that we're going to talk about in a little bit uh, that you're going to be doing with uh, Core Builders in Santa Clara. Yes. Which is extremely exciting. So, um, now, other than Middlebrook Gardens, you also have the California Native Garden Foundation. Right. And my understanding is that is your, you know, kind of your uh, uh, main nonprofit mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that focuses on education, research, uh, and acts as a resource ed organization to help inform the community at large, to help inform builders, uh, developers, homeowners, whoever, about these ecosystems. Right. Yeah. It's an educational arm. Uh, mm -hmm. and so, so um, why is it important to promote the use of native California plants? Well, because they're the most sustainable. They're the plants that are going to help us uh, cope with climate change and extreme weather, uh, you know, events. Uh, they're the plants that are going to support more biodiversity. Mm -hmm. They're the plants that are going to use less resources and actually provide more food for us uh, without uh, expending so much energy and uh, without using, um, you know, fossil fuels. And so really the answer for how we're going to face the 21st century and address uh, climate change and the reduction in biodiversity and our children's disconnection <laughs> to nature <laughs> is to go back and recreate the natural systems that support life here in California. Great. So um, one of the things that you do under um, the California Native Garden Pro uh, uh, Foundation is you do educational garden design grants. Yes, that's true. And my understanding is, is that as part of that, what you do is you will work with schools yes. that want to create community gardens yes. at their facilities. Right. Um, and you will um, talk with them and, and uh, you know, put some um, uh, things in place. Can you tell us a little bit, how does that work? Oh, the garden grant program? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Well, uh, we offer uh, design grants to schools uh, who are willing to show us that they have a garden program in place and they want to expand it. They specifically would like to do a native garden. Uh, and uh, they have a team of of parents and teachers and school administrators who really support this and are going to support it for we know up to at least five years from the time that we would begin to work with them. 
and then if they sign up then we want to know also that their teachers are going to be teaching science you know math art technology engineering you know steam education we want to know that the garden is going to be used as an outdoor classroom and then we will work with the school to begin to implement changes in their whole schoolyard because we really believe that the land that the school is actually located on should be a teaching platform for the children that attend that school to really understand how our planet works and how we, they can make decisions in their childhood and then as they become adults of how to manage the resources that our planet provides. Wow, very cool. And that brings us to your other nonprofit, Elsie. Yes. <laughs> well, Elsie is actually a part of the CNGF. What Elsie mm -hmm. is, it's a laboratory for learning. It's the model for the schoolyard. And there is a, have you heard of uh, the United States Green Building Council? No. Okay. Well, if you're. Are they the people that do the. Um, the LEED certification. LEED certification yes. ratings. Right. Okay. The LEED I've heard of. Okay. Well, that's certifying a building that's sustainable, that's using you know, more natural materials and doesn't have to drive many miles to get the products that are going to be used to build the building. Mm -hmm. And it's using solar energy and it's using, you know, it has a smaller footprint, so it's using less um, fossil fuels to actually build the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's the certification for a green building. Mm -hmm. Well, now they have a certification for the landscape. Oh, wonderful. And that's called SITES. The SITES Initiative. So is it S-I-T-E-S? S-I-T-E-S. Okay. And it has 250 benchmarks for sustainable urban land use. And our project there on Ray Street is the only certified site in the county of Santa Clara. Wow, that is really yeah. impressive. It has 250 benchmarks for sustainable urban land use. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, we, we, we need to have uh, some, of, some of these big campuses come talk to you. Yes, we would like it to be a model for 10,000 schools in California. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, LC stands for the Environmental Laboratory for Sustainability and Ecological Education. Mm -hmm. So, in, in, you know, you mentioned um, a teaching garden. Right. And so, so basically what you've done is you, you've created a model, right. you know, um, at uh, the Middlebrook Center. Mm -hmm. And you do have schools that come and they visit. Yes. They do um, field trips there. Right. Um, like you said, you, you work with schools to help them design their own community right. gardens right. And, and build a sustainable platform for that. Um, and you also provide help them do lesson plans right. and, and different things yeah, like that. Yeah, we want to start training teachers, you know, because a lot of teachers maybe aren't comfortable like teaching math outdoors. Mm -hmm. But we have great ideas about how to get the kids outdoors in nature and learn, you know, STEAM education. Well, I, and I just, I love the idea, you know, of, of using it for science. I mean, you could go out and study insects in the garden. You could uh, just, you know... Uh, study how like uh, ants will farm aphids on yes, plants exactly. and, and the interactions right. Um, right. and uh, you know especially oh my goodness you know all the little critters that are there in the garden right. and uh, or what we do is uh, with the middle school kids we have them calculate how much rainfall is falling on the roof of the building and how you could capture that rainfall and reuse it to grow food or to create a little wetland so that you could attract more birds and butterflies and more species of different animals, insects, uh, to create, you know, more biodiversity by using that roof water well, and, and calculating it. And, and I love the fact that, that you're, you're um, not only teaching children about the environment, but also challenging them to think of new ways. Absolutely. Uh, because as they say, out of the mouths of babes, <laughs> yes. right? They're going to be managing the resources. They're going to be managing the resources, you know, in their adult lives. Well, right? you know, and, and sometimes kids will come up with the most brilliant ideas that are so basic that right. we as adults completely miss the boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. a lot of fun working with the kids. Okay, so, yeah. so, you know, uh, some of the things, you know, as far as, like, education, what are your primary goals um, with Elsie in trying to teach children about gardening? Is it, um, you know, the communities? Is it 
uh, looking, trying to look at it as a whole and be a yeah. part of? Yeah, well, it's really connecting up about 10 different factors. And those factors are what humans need to complete our life cycle. Okay. And, um, you know, one of the things is you, you actually actively do work with, you have teaching gardens that you've put in place at various schools. Right. And you work with a number of schools. Oh, yeah. We've worked with over 80 schools now. Yeah, yeah, you know, which I think is just fantastic. Um, you know, we need to replicate you in, in <laughs> at least every county, if, if not in every city. Um, I mean, so, which reminds me, so now I want to talk about um, your new project that, that well, is, yeah. is coming online, um, which I'm, I'm really excited about because it's revolutionary. And that is the Agrihood project that you are doing uh, in Santa Clara, Santa Clara. Mm -hmm. um, right at Winchester and Stevens Creek, right. um, across from Valley Fair. Yes. Um, there's a vacant piece of land that the county's owned for a number of years. You guys, um, you know, were in a uh, uh, proposal, right. you know, uh, with multiple other developers. Right. There were eight. And oh, different developers. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you've partnered with Core right. uh, Development. And you guys have come up with this project, the Agrihood, yeah. which is just amazing. <laughs> um, it's just truly stunning. So can you tell me, what is the vision for the Agrihood? Well, it's very intelligent land use. It's land use, it's using land for human beings that uh, uses less energy and provides them with a healthier lifestyle, in a nutshell. Um, there's going to be probably maybe five or six hundred people living there on six acres and there's a, almost an acre of a working farm and then there's community gardens and it's a really interesting project because uh, it, it sort of uh, mimics a natural village mm -hmm. so it has 167 low-income senior housing units it has I don't know I think 30 affordable units yeah and, oh, and then it and then and then it has market rate so those are the full price that you would pay here in the valley but the market rate actually pays for the low income mm -hmm. and most of them are apartments but there's 32 um, market rate um, townhomes town that, that they will have. sell. Right. And so that actually, it's, it's a very good economic model. And then if the buildings are tall enough and they have five stories and then six story for the roof and we're doing some interesting things on the roof you'll hear about. Yeah, well, you were talking <laughs> yeah. about doing some aquaponics up I there. Want which, to, yeah, I want to. Which I think to. would be a fabulous idea. And if you come and visit Elsie, you know, our teaching garden model at Ray State, you'll see our aquaponics farm. Yes. 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 It, which I yeah. love. And it's very cool. And we're growing a lot of food there and with fish poop. Yes. <laughs> and 10% of the water that a typical farm will use and taking up the same space that you would take growing food in the ground you're going to grow 40% more food mm -hmm. with these, with this technology of aquaponics. Yeah, now well, I know um, part of the, the vision with um, the core project mm -hmm. um, was something you called uh, solary, yes. uh, which was your, you know, the greenhouse gas emissions. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, that's an idea right now, but it's getting a lot of traction. And the reason that, uh, I'm trying to promote the idea of the SOLRI. SOLRI stands for the Sustainable Urban Land Use Research Institute. And we're going to have this incredible neighborhood where people won't have to drive to go buy their food. Their food will be right there. Mm -hmm. And they can work in the gardens if they want to. We've got other groups and community groups coming in to use the gardens. We have school field trips coming. Uh, there are so many people that use that part of, uh, you know, for shopping with mm -hmm. the Valley Fair and the Santana Row. I think there's 18 million people that shop at Santana Row and Valley Fair, and we're going to have an everyday farmer's market, and we're hoping that it'll be pedestrian traffic mm -hmm. and not so many cars. So we're looking at alternative transportation, too. Well, what we want to do with a Sulri, because it was used for agricultural research, it mm -hmm. was a uh, University of California farm extension uh, 
agricultural research station since the 1920s. Oh, okay. And so we want to continue with agricultural research and maybe some um, social justice research and and we've got such incredible academic institutions that are very close to the uh, site. So we have Santa Clara University, San Jose State, Stanford, and UC Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. which has an agroecology uh, program. Mm -hmm. And so we're wanting to get our academic institutions involved in studying what we're going to be doing there so that we can uh, have data to support, well, are the people living there taking less medication? Are they mm -hmm. living longer? Are they healthier? Do they have healthier relationships with their family members? How, do, how does this environment, yes. being in this very nurturing and green um, thing, I, I'm just glad to see that it's not another, you know, building that's out to the sidewalk and no greenery at all. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's greenery oh, so everywhere. I, I think those should be outlawed. But, yes. uh, uh, you know, I, it, it is, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful project, and, and I'm really excited. So one of the things I wanted to ask you about is uh, we get, keep getting back to this, you know, healthy land use, healthy land use. Yeah. So you have um, like eight, theme, you know, yeah. a, a eight themes right. of what healthy right. land use yeah. is all about. And it's all about what we need to complete our life cycle. What do humans need? And, and if we could provide the needs that we have close to where we are mm -hmm. and not have to go miles and miles to get them, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't have to have cars all the time and be burning gasoline, which would put more CO2 into the atmosphere. And it's going to be easier for everybody to live because mm -hmm. you won't have to have all this craziness all the time. And throughout <laughs> the year, you do all kinds of different <coughs> workshops and, and programs and things like that where people can come and learn all about these different things. Right. So the there, there's 10, uh, or we could say there's eight. I mean, sometimes I say there's eight, sometimes I say there are 10, but the, what humans need? Well, the most important thing that we need is soil. Soil and sunshine and water. So we definitely are gonna be taking care of our soils. Then uh, we need water, and we need to know how to conserve water and reuse it again and again. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't want it going down the storm drain. We want to keep all of that water and reuse it and return it to the aquifer. Mm -hmm. So there's soil, there's water, there's air. We we don't want to live in pollution. So and how fluorocarbons yeah, and all these yeah, things that we put into right. the air. And so that's a consideration. And then there's food. We need to be able to grow food that we're not relying on disrupting our soil and we're not relying uh, on, ch on chemicals to grow food or that we have to, we have to carry food long distances mm -hmm. from where it's grown. So there's food. And then there's our waste. <laughs> oh, and that's a whole nother program. <laughs> but we can talk about even composting and vermicomposting yeah. and how we're gonna grow food without uh, uh, phosphate-based fertilizers, mm -hmm. which are contributing to our crisis with climate change. Well, and getting in, you know, pesticides are a concern. Oh, yeah. You know, there's this. You They're know, all petroleum-based. Yeah. Uh, organic foods. Mm -hmm. You know, because what we're finding is, uh, you know, the pesticides uh, are not. You know, they don't wash off. They get ingested. They build up in your system. Uh, you know, all these different things. Right. So we're really looking very, very closely at of what kind of a farm we're actually going to have there. So now, speaking of farms, <laughs> um, I want to talk a lot for a few minutes just about one of your other projects that you have there, which is Garden for Ghana. Um, so you currently um, go on an annual, you know, on a, a somewhat regular basis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to Ghana. Yes. Uh, and Steph, how did you get started with, with doing a garden in Ghana? <laughs> that was crazy. My husband and I volunteered with Yale University. It was a service project. And his brother and, and his brother's wife and two of their grandkids and one of our grandkids and Barry and me, my husband, uh, we decided we're going to go on the service project to this small village in Ghana. And my, my husband is a physician, so he worked in a clinic, mm -hmm. and I taught the kids about their local ecology. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't planning to do anything in Ghana, but after I was there in that village 
for a week, I realized that the knowledge that I had and that I was using to help schools in California, that I could do it in Ghana. And I felt like I could really help them. And I also realized that some of my ideas are revolutionary. My friends have always said, Allery, the, you know, people will catch up with you, but you're always ahead of the, the curve. Yeah. <laughs> And so, and to try to do some of these really more innovative uh, ideas as far as, uh, as creating farm, uh, creating small farms, uh, I, I had better luck actually building my model in a developing country than to build it here. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. and uh, it's very impressive. I mean, I, you know, um, we've got some uh, photos, you know, that um, our viewers can see. Oh yeah, stuff. I mean, basically, you start with these uh, areas where there's nothing. You know, there's a lot of um, you know water damage. Um, well, they've cut down most of their trees, and and all their native plants are gone, and uh, in the area where the village is, and so uh, the topsoil is just washed off to the ocean, and uh, it was it's pretty sad. Uh, they Ghana can't feed itself. It it actually buys rice from China and the Chinese overcharge the Ghanaians for their rice. Yeah. And so I wanted to see if I could work with the with the people in this village and teach them how to bring their land back and how to support themselves and their families. Yeah, and that seems to be going very, pretty well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I saw recently that, you know, you've, they've gotten their first harvest in. Oh, yeah. Um, you go back on a periodic basis and, and Twice help a year. some more. Yeah. And um, I know recently you put up a post, you were looking for volunteers oh, yeah. that might be interested in, yeah. in going and doing some uh, uh, work in an oh, exotic yeah. country. Oh, yeah. If somebody wants to go and volunteer, they can come with me. You know? Yes, so, that's true. Allery, um, is there, um, we just have a couple moments. So, um, is there anything that you want our audience to know, you know, that is like something you, you need to have them know? Well, I would just say if what I've said tonight, the, the questions that you've asked me and how I've answered them, if anything resonates with anyone who's watching uh, us talk, that I would love to have them come down and let us know that they support these ideas and if they would like to volunteer or write a check <laughs> or do both <laughs> 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 or just tell their friends or come down once we have the agri-hood or volunteer at their local school or... Well, and, and with the agri-hood, you're also taking in a lot of uh, input from the community. Yes. As yeah, part of that project, which is great. Yeah, with over 100 local organizations. And so now, um, if someone wants to find out about any of, uh, you know, about the Middlebrook Center, um, see the California Native Garden Foundation, LC, Garden for Ghana, uh, the best place for them to get that information would be to go to your main website, right. which is uh, middlebrookcenter.com. Yeah, middlebrookcenter.com. And then from there, you have different little sub-sites right. on there with all the different information. Or if they want to hire uh, Middlebrook Gardens uh, to take out their lawn and design a beautiful new garden and even maybe put some food plants in it. I didn't get to talk about native edibles. Yes. That's a whole nother topic. <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah. Or there's there's another thing that they can do at the center is, is you do the Eating California yeah, program uh, where you do do meals on a, on a regular basis. Right, and they're native plants. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so um, our viewers, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, please check out uh, Middlebrook Gardens uh, in the Middlebrook Center at middlebrookcenter.com. Uh, go there, volunteer, find out more information, and I hope you've enjoyed it.